Hey everybody, this is Alicia Katz Pollock at Royal Wise Solutions at RoyalWise.com coming to you today from our classroom. And what I wanted to show you today is a new feature that's being rolled out in QuickBooks Online called tagging. Tagging, you know, we're familiar with it in your Gmail where you can take different emails and tag them with different identifiers so that you can search for them. And if you're a Quicken user, you might be used to tagging your transactions that way as well. In QuickBooks Online, we've had the feature for classes, and I think into its long-term strategy is that maybe they'll get rid of classes and replace it with tags. I don't see that happening anytime soon. It's not quite ready for prime time in that way. But if you have a need to identify different income and different expenses and be able to do some basic searching on them or do some basic reporting on them, without having to use classes, this is a great feature that you're really going to enjoy. It is just being rolled out. It's just in beta right now, so you might not see it in your file. And it is not yet full featured. They're only just rolling out small features along the way. So what you see now when you're watching this video, it may do a lot more um, down the line if you are watching this video a year later, for example. But let me show you what they're up to and what they are getting started with. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. So what we're looking at is my sample construction file. This isn't a real file, so you're gonna see some crazy experimental stuff in here every so often. But where I go in order to use tags is up to the gear in the upper right-hand corner and then down to tags right here. When I'm in the tags area, there's two sections. Up at the top are going to be the graphs where we can see the results of our tagging once we start using it. And then down below, we have the tagging setup area where we manage our tags. You'll see on the left-hand side, the tag types. These are different groups of tags so that you can have different categories. And then inside those types, we'll put in the tags themselves. So given that this is a construction company, let's go ahead and set up the tags for the construction company. I'm going to drop down the arrow where it says add tag. And first, before I do that, I'm going to add a type of tag. This is construction and they do some residential and some commercial. So let's go ahead and make that. So let's say this is the construction type. So I'll give it a name and then I'll pick a color for it and I'll click save. So now I have a new type called construction type. And I also want to distinguish between new construction and, re and remodeling. So I have construction type, and then I'm also going to make another one for client type. So I'll add type right there, and I'll call this one client type. And I'll make this one yellow, and I'll click Save. If you don't like the names that you've given, you can click on the pencil and then rename it or um, add in a new color. Also notice now that I've gone in using the pencil, it's taken me to a tag name where I can add tags right inside the edit screen for the tag type, or I could go up to the add tag button in the upper right hand corner and click there. And if I do it from here, I can say what the tag name is and assign it to which one. So now for construction type, that's where it's going to be my uh, new, no, that's going to be my new construction versus my remodeling. So I'll call this one new construction and then I'll save it. So that's how to do it if I did it from the button up here. If I do it from construction type here and click the pencil. I can also do it, enter it from here. So this will be my remodel. And then I'll add that tag. So if I do it from here, I can keep going through the different tags. So those are my two construction types, at least for now. And you know what, let's add handy work right there too. So I'll say, um, well, I was going to write handyman, but I don't like the word handyman in this day and age. So I'm going to call this uh, repair and maintenance, or just repairs. So I'll add that tag as well. Now, when I look at my construction type, I can see the three kinds of construction that I do. Then I want to do some tags for my client type. So I'll go ahead and click the pencil right there. Or again, I can click add tag and do it from here. I'll make sure client type 
is down there and my two client types are residential and no, that's not good. I actually like the pencil method better so that I can add multiple tags. So residential and commercial. Now it's important to note that I had to create two different detailed types for these because you can only pick one tag per type. So if I needed multiple tags in the construction type, I would actually have to separate these out into different types instead. So every time I have a transaction, I can only pick one construction type and I can only pick one client type. Maybe down the line that'll change, but that's the way that it is for now. If I needed to edit those tags, I can click on edit on the right hand side and I can change the name or reassign it to a different type. Note though, that there is no delete. So if you make a mistake for the moment, you're stuck with it. Hopefully somebody from Intuit's listening and they go, oh, we need to be able to take these out if needed. But I can imagine that they didn't do that yet because if you had transactions that were tagged to that tag and you delete it, what's going to happen? So I think that's probably why they're still in version one with that feature. So now I have construction type and client type. And so I've got residential and commercial in my client types and new construction remodel and repairs for my construction. Now that we have it set up, it's time to use it on our transactions. And you can use these both on your income transactions and on your expense transactions. Let's say I wanted to, I do a one-off job with one of my clients. So I'll go up to the new button and I'm just gonna make a sales receipt for now so that I don't have to deal with the AR. So I will make a sales receipt for one of the projects that is underway and let's go with um, Dan Tepper right there. And I would fill in all of this information right here. You don't want to take your time to watch me fill in you know, custom fields. We're going to head straight to the tags. Now Dan is a residential client, so I will click on the tag for client type and I will choose residential. I also can do this just by typing. So this is some handyman repairs that I'm going to make. So if I just start typing REP, you can see that matching tags pop up. So you can do it either way. You can uh, type it and pick it, or you can use the drop downs and pick uh, one of the tags from there. So you can see though, you can have one tag from as many categories as you want all on that transaction. So since this is some repair and maintenance, let's go ahead and put this under some painting. And we did about $250 worth of painting. And you, know, you still have your classes here. So if you are moving from classes to tags, you can do that same, um, those same tags right there as you're making this transition. So I'll save and close that sales receipt. Actually, let's do make another one too. So I'll save a new, and then I'll make a second one. Let's do one of my commercials. So let's go to building three. And so building three is commercial. So if I just go ahead and type in com, I get commercial right there. And, or if I went to the construction type, this is actually new construction that we're working on. And again, I could keep going down the line if I wanted to and say who. For example, I have a lot of my employees in here as well. Now for this new construction, right now we are in the concrete section of the job. So I'll make a make one for that as well. Now, one of the reasons why I like tabs, tags over classes is that now it gives me two different dimensions. So you might find a way to make the two of them work hand in hand as well. So I'm going to save and close that. Let's do the same thing for buying our materials. If I go up to the plus sign, I'll make an expense. And this time we are going to pay the Chidester Marble. Oh, we actually have an open bill for them. So we could even apply it to the bill, but in this case, I'm not going to. And I can do the exact same thing. I can put in the tags for this as well. This is the same job that I was doing for building two. So I'm going to put in the same tags that I did for building two. And I went in and I got some of my supplies and materials. Let's go straight to cost of goods for this. And I went and I bought my concrete. 
and I paid $750 and I can still you know tag it to the jobs that I'm doing so that it shows up in the project center for this job so that's fantastic and I can even use the same class there as well but now I have it tagged. I'll save and close that. So now that you've seen how to use the tags in your transactions, now we can go back up to the top. And uh, I haven't refreshed the screen yet, so nothing has changed. But what I do is I can pick a date range and I can pick a one of my tagged groups. So for example, construction type. Now I can see how much of my income was new construction and how much of my income was due to repairs. I can flip this then and do it by client type. Now I can see how much of my revenue is commercial and how much of it is residential. You have the same tools for money out. This allows you to see your expenses by those exact same tags. So now I can see how much was new construction and if I put them side by side, I can see that my how my expenses fall out. Right now there is no comparison chart. I can't put them above and below each other. There's no bar comparison charts. All you do is have this side by side view. But so when I think of tagging, I think of it as just kind of a quick snapshot as to how I'm doing. And then let's go take a look at client type down here and I can see that my expense, here's my income and here's the expenses. So you can see that tags right now is a easy way to start looking at money in and money out based on multiple dimensions on one transaction. As of the time of this recording, and it's February 2020, that's kind of all it does. But I know that they're going to be putting tags in the banking so that you can tag from the banking center. Right now you can't do that, but I know that that's coming for a fact. And I'm looking forward to tagging reports as well so that I can put these side by side and kind of get a P&L with columns by tag. So those are some of the things that I'm looking forward to. So this is a, my latest edition of Look What I Found from Alicia Katz-Pollock at royalwise.com and I'll see you in the next class.